<laughs> wait a minute. Turkish, wait, no, wait a minute. Wow, it's the U.S. border. They were smuggling him from Mexico, too. Yeah. You know, the whole movie took place in, in Istanbul. Yeah, but they kept going to yeah, Sonora. They, they literally... Yeah, no, it's I'm, the U.S. border. Okay, how, so... How, how drunk were you, Will? Yeah, you're too drunk. You well, no, I mean, like, they were going to sneak people across the U.S. Mexican border, but, like, that didn't prevent the movie from taking place entirely in Turkey. No, it wasn't no, entirely it in Turkey. He literally they, had... He was in Mexico he, for the first two seasons. No, you guys were drunk. I read no, this movie I, correctly. No, I, no. The only it location had, in this you film... You literally was person. on the Absolutely border incorrect. and grilling a guy... In the very beginning. In, a, in the very, very beginning. That was that, a... That was the, yes, that's the that's the porter that they've been talking yes. about. Steven, you're tearing us apart. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we saw we saw a contract. We saw a motherfucking contract to kill. Contract to kill, starring Steven Seagal. It's one of his late period movies, and you know how we've talked about how he's becoming increasingly slow, and his coats are becoming increasingly bigger. <laughs> well. I don't know if the coats can get any bigger if he could talk any slower than he did in this one, or this if the plot was, could be any more confusing. He can't confusing. get any bronzer. That's this why. one was, uh, I just, yeah. I, I, Him and Cake Boss. Yeah. I, didn't think, I didn't think he could sound more like being on Quaaludes than any of the previous <laughs> oh, yeah. movies, but like it's gotten worse. He's even more chopped and screwed yeah. than he you was before. Yes, <laughs> so at the, be- at the beginning, they do the scene in every Seagal movie where like a guy, a guy who's like, yeah, I'm a t- secret agent from the government in- intelligence bureau. Uh, is like, And he, he talks to, he meets Seagal in like some bar and he goes, uh, you're actually, you've never lost a fight. You made every gunshot you've ever made. Every woman wants to have sex with you. Everyone thinks you're cool, including the terrorists, the drug dealers, and the government. So can you do this op for me? And in every movie, Seagal goes, I'm going to tell you one motherfucking thing. We going to do this my way. And what that always means is that this mission is going to be 90% him sitting in a yeah. car. Yeah. Yes. Not even driving. There was, there's, Seagal is not an active man these it's days. It's amazing. So he, he has several f- f- fights in which it's like his body doubles back and then cut to him punching at the screen. <laughs> Like there's yeah. a person there cut back to his body double. And then one scene where he shot some people. But in that scene, <laughs> he shot them from the front seat of the car he was driving. <laughs> he didn't well, even get out of the he car. He made some shots at one point and then advanced up the stairs like a shuffling old man worried about leaking <laughs> urine. Yeah. <laughs> well, the, the, yeah. the novelty. Like it was a prostate problem <laughs> shuffle. Well, the, the interesting thing, like, okay, uh, the plus of this movie is that it did feature quite a lot of Seagal, unlike, let's say, The Asian Connection or, or The, the Perfect, Perfect Weapon, Weapon where mm-hmm. Seagal is basically the villain of the movie that just appears in like maybe 10 minutes of screen time to yeah. just. Yeah, there's a lot of Seagal. In philosophically this, yeah. and touch women it, awkwardly. And, and in those. decide it, that he like just refuses to shoot unless they come to his house now? Yeah. Yeah, like, because yeah. it's like the same, like, like We've Minsk noticed, yeah. mansion yeah. that we there think is, is just his. There is a location sh- uh, in this movie that was like the main like drug dealers hangout that was recycled probably thirty times in in this film. But we, you know, because we're yeah. Seagal, you it's, know, completists, we've realized yeah. that this same building was used in several. Yeah. Of his it's other obviously movies. his fuck dacha outside Mermont's. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I mean, we want to make clear this is in the there are two categories. Yeah, the villain Seagal and the hero Seagal. And the villain Seagal does things the real Steven Seagal would never do, like traffic women, <laughs> have sex slaves, <laughs> say, say confusing shit that goes nowhere. This where, one had a really awful moment where, you know, we all know about his penchant for sitting awkwardly and having his, you know, having a naked woman bestride him. Uh, but this time, I really felt like I wanted to call the cops on <laughs> yeah. behalf of this poor woman who got topless and then had him like listlessly paw her tits for like ten minutes. It was like we oh, saw this too poor much of that. He, woman. Like, he full on just squeezed. Uh, yeah. Yeah. He was squeezing uh, the Charmin, and, and it was and imagine, imagine a woman like in her like uh, you know in her twenties yeah. or whatever in a lingerie reclining naked on a bed, <laughs> lying next to a man wearing a black leather jacket the size of a tarp, yeah. <laughs> fully clothed, pawing her her breasts. Yeah, it was it was disgusting. Yeah, I, I I demand an Interpol <laughs> investigation. I need to know where that woman is now. Could you uh? D- uh can you take some of my natural juices from the pan that I'm laying <laughs> in and baste my torso, please? He's, no. This is a little motherfucking thing we like to call au jus. <laughs> now, the other, the other thing that we noticed about this movie is that 
okay, unlike the other the 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 main Seagal movies like Good Man, Mercenary Absolution, or some of the other action movies where he's not just sort of the villain behind the scenes, where he takes a more shall we say active role in, in the very film. generous <laughs> use yeah, of the term. Yeah. Is that in those movies, usually he has a sidekick who's a much younger man who does almost all of the action and fighting scenes himself because, you know, like, the, the, it's sort of like his stunt double. I but tried like to a, get off of character. this hemorrhoid pillow. Sorry. In, in this movie, they sort of have that, but, like, it's a guy who's slightly younger than him, but not really, it, who just does... That, oh, Asian Kyle drill. McLaughlin? He's yeah. Like, Kind, he might be his age, but he just took care of himself. Yeah, he's a yeah. more well preserved version. Yeah, yeah he didn't eat Auntie Anne's hot dog pretzels <laughs> every day for like twenty years. <laughs> but this yeah, guy he just looked like did, uh, Asian comic instead of doing fight. This guy did a little fighting, but he mainly just did drone remote control. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that yeah. was like, his role. The there's, there's a lot of drones to add in this movie. Tech into a movie for a very low cost. I mean, you know, this is like a two hundred dollar Walmart drone. Yeah, that they use. Mm-hmm. and they put like a plastic gun in like a window and then f- put like CGI flash to make it look like it was shooting. Yeah, it's the, sh- the shooter copter. Yeah, yeah. really bad. Uh, I, hey, motherfucker, I'm just, uh, you're not for me, but uh, for my friend, is there any way your drone can go unnoticed into uh, uh, Forever 21 dressing room? <laughs> You know, just for, you know, if we needed to do an op there. <laughs> <laughs> this one motherfucker is called Reconnaissance. I mean, to me, like, since we've been watching these movies, like, to me, like, and, and this movie really pushed it to a, a new limit that I didn't think was possible. Uh, watching these movies, it, it's, they're surreal. They're surreal and <laughs> subversive of the whole medium of film because you watch them and things happen and it just sort of washes over you and you're like 45 minutes into the movie and then you realize you don't know Anything that has happened, no, no. Yeah. like you don't know what the plot is. Towards like you, the like, end, we were it's like, just, where, yeah. where, who are these people? Yeah. Why it's, are they there? It's experimental filmmaking in that, like, they fill <laughs> an hour and a half of. Feel like you're sundowning with Alzheimer's. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but like nothing makes happens. You question reality, yeah. and it ended in the most avant-garde way a Steven Seagal mm, yeah. movie has ever ended. <laughs> so he kills one of the two, he kills one of the bad guys after doing one of those like I'm not actually gonna fight because I fought for two minutes earlier and I'm wounded, <laughs> so I'm just gonna sit down across from you and then after some bullshit dialogue i'll pull a gun and shoot you he did that twice and then he's in a car chase of course we don't know what he was chasing but he was in the middle of a car chase and it just cuts oh serving like, mcdonald's like stop serving serving mcdonald's stop serving wheat pies after this era <laughs> hour it's like the end of texas chainsaw massacre just like this just, abrupt cut yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, which is and, amazing and even more so because at least that was like at the end of the plot she'd ostensibly gotten away here he's in the middle of a fucking chase he, so the ostensive plot of this movie is that Steven Seagal is called in to do an op and they're like you know the most important doer first op, of all yeah. that's, that's his background that's a pre-op <laughs> job pre-op <laughs> <laughs> so pre-op they uh, they're like so Steven we're getting you everything you need for your op which is a 26 year old woman who wants to fuck you for some reason and Asian Kyle McLaughlin who and has a remote control cars and helicopters so their adversaries are like it's the Mexican drug cartel and Al Qaeda Hezbollah. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yeah. The, they're so we never like really know. Chocolate and peanut butter. Yeah. Yeah, we never really know what they're doing. I mean, Al- I think Al- they want to smuggle like this bomb maker Raouf. Yeah, Raouf yeah. to America across the border. But it's un- yeah, But it's like they feel like said, oh, it, it was a. Uh, you know that that classic economy we all know and love the drugs for terror. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, you know, bring. I, you know, I just love that terrorism you guys do. Nine eleven. I like, mean, I, for what Al Qaeda did. Forget about the billions of dollars in drugs we smuggle across this border every year. It's much more valuable <laughs> for us to get you over there so you could do a terror attack that will destroy our entire business. Yeah, so the Sinola cartel is just like, yeah, we're actually out of money. We just gave away all our drugs to see terrorism happen. <laughs> it's our favorite thing, but... They never actually get it done because every meeting between, like, you actually can't tell who's the cartel no. and who's Al Qaeda Hezbollah <laughs> because it's well, just, yeah, because it's just all a bunch Dagestani. of right. It's all a bunch of Dagestani's in like ill-fitting fourteen-button pinstripe suits <laughs> who are like, "You told me no one would be here," <laughs> and the other guy is like. I only told you to expect what you did not expect. <laughs> and then there's then there's just a fucking barrel of molasses in a leather jacket wandering outside the mansion, hitting guys in the back of the head. <laughs> and just just shuffling, <laughs> yeah. marinated yeah. bear like, of the There's one scene, like, <laughs> there's one scene uh, towards the, the end of the movie yeah. uh, when what is, I guess, supposed to be the climax of the movie where, like, oh, it's all really happening. 
like he sneaks into like the terror drug compound <laughs> and it's just like you motherfuckers didn't count on a man moving this slowly, did you? <laughs> yeah, and yeah, it's just yeah, like, yeah. There's like some guy by the security camera and there's literally a long <laughs> shot of him. They're like, he's very slowly walking up behind you. And then the guy turns around and sees him and Seagal keeps walking towards him at the same pace. That, I mean... And then he just like does the Seagal thing where he just sort of like... Fli- does his arm his he flicks his arms around and like throws the guy on the ground and then just keeps standing completely immobile waiting for the guy to get <laughs> back up again so he can throw him on the ground felt, another time it felt like he had watched the raid 2 in preparation because he did that weird fight thing where like he put his totally limp wrist up against the oh, limp right. wrist yeah, of yeah. the other guy like 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 in gonna, the kitchen scene like the, the kitchen that, scene yeah. in raid 2 but like the, do you remember the shot where he the guy down and then the guy's down. Or whether he throws the guy on the ground and he's like, stay down, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> but, but let's not give the listeners the wrong impression. This is a dialogue driven movie. Yes. Oh my god, oh, it's all so it's like Rashomon. Rashomon There's so much talking. It is the Rashomon of Hungary yeah. or whatever. There, there are at least Hungary, three. Fuck. <laughs> There are at least three um, total like digressions, almost break, breaking the fourth wall, where he's like, "By the way, we don't hate Muslims." <laughs> yeah. Like he's literally like, "Well, no, I don't care about you know anyone's religion." And the girl's like, "Right, because the true believers don't do terrorism." And they're like looking into the camera because like you know whatever the government of Dagestan yeah. made them put this. Yeah, yeah. Oh my god! No, and he said, "He's like, you motherfuckers really think this is all about religion?" I understand a warrior fighting for their cause, but it's like the great Genghis Khan <laughs> someone said, worship whoever God, but pay me taxes. Yeah. You know, who, Shout out to, his, uh, to uh, Ramsey Kordorov. <laughs> you, you know your shining star. <laughs> you know who never killed women and children? Genghis Khan. That's true. Yeah, yeah, really? oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, so this movie, when you watch it, like there are technically things happening every 30 minutes. Every 30 minutes, Steven Seagal, like, you know, in this universe, in the universe of Seagal, the worst thing that can happen to you is a fat guy touching your wrist, and that's why he wears <laughs> that's why he wears divorce guy bracelets, so no one can do it to him. But every thirty minutes, there's a sequence of that. But in between it, like as Amber said, it's so dialogue driven. It actually feels like depression. It, oh God, after yeah. we should have done like a conference call to a suicide hotline yeah, because, because I felt ended, directionless we so and without purpose. It's like, we had been slowly exposed to radiation poisoning over the course of watching this movie, and our like bones were just absorbing uranium. And we're, it's By like the end, ironically it was like wearing a lead vest, walking yeah. down a hotel hallway full of clothes. Yeah, stores. it's almost as though a shadowy Eastern European regime had doused us with polonium. <laughs> watching this movie, it will give you the same sensation as taking a bubble bath in Fukushima water. <laughs> Watching it uh, is like when they when you're at the dentist's office and they give you that lead apron and then leave the room <laughs> yeah. after Absolutely. pointing a giant yeah. like gun at your head yeah. and you then know, they also the- make you smoke the four dollar gas station cigarettes that are called like Mavericks. So here we go. Let's just uh, I watched this last night. Just gonna share it with you boys. Thank you for coming, Jake. It's been it's been a long two weeks. I came here to tell you that Hayes is willing to forget your resignation. The CIA is your home. Defending America is your life. Jake, I need you to tell me the truth. Did you kill Gina Orsetti? You're asking me questions (laughs) that you will never never understand. understand. And they're asking you to make me come back. I've been doing this a lot longer than you. And I've done a lot of things that they will never let you know about. The thing that offends me the most, it's not that I've risked my life for my country and done things that most people couldn't have done. This country that I love so much, country, is the real reason why I feel so betrayed that I was lied to about what they've done to us, to my country, country, slaughtered, slaughtered. That's the stuff they're not telling you. Where we have literally two governments inside a government, nobody would have thought 20 years ago if I would have told them, what's gonna happen now? Did you kill Orsetti? Don't ask me what I did. 
how I did it or any of this bullshit about it's my home. When you know what I know, I know, I know you wouldn't call it your home either. I'm done. There we go. There we go. <laughs> and the movie's called General Commander. General Commander. General Commander. Is that his name? Yeah, <laughs> no, no, he no, he was uh, the General, I'm General Commander. Commander. Oh. I uh, like okay, so honestly, like yeah, like uh, obviously the CIA is doing a lot of stuff. They're slaughtering people that they're not telling you about. <laughs> don't ask don't ask me what I've done. They will. I've done things they will never. Um, I don't know if you guys noticed in that clip. Like Seagal's nose has never looked more like alcoholic, like bloated and sort of pockmarked. Yeah, it's um, looking yeah, bad. He's yeah, looking his, like uh, he's looking like W. C. Fields. Yeah, his uh, his the texture of his the hair on top of his head and his goatee is the texture of like low quality astroturf. Yeah. But like if you just soaked it in soy sauce, uh, <laughs> his, his skin is the texture of a sun chip. Uh, he is probably, there's probably no one on earth who looks worse than he does at this point. He looks terrible. Yeah. He looks terrible. He doesn't have, because like a lot of guys who look bad, you know, your Nick Nolte's or maybe your Mickey Rourke's, there's a weathered sort of uh, dignity to even yeah. their uh, aged misfortune. Or, or like Val Kilmer, with him, it's just I've been. He's been sitting on a sex barge barge in the Baltic <laughs> Ocean for the past uh, thirty years, and just turning into this disgusting orange tick. Yeah, he's been fuck. Yeah, he's been fucking like Ukrainian prostitutes who have like Chernobyl pussy syndrome <laughs> for like twenty years, and we're seeing the effects. So yeah, that's uh. Uh, General Commander, I gotta say, uh, I I only made it like forty minutes into this one. Did he move it at is, any point from a seated position? It is interminable. It is the slowest one he's ever done. And like and like most of these later era Seagal movies, he's basically only on screen for about five minutes. Was he ever? What, that, did he ever stand up at any of the point he, that he, he was he, on he, screen? He did stand up and walk briskly in, oh, in the wow. opening oh, action wow. sequence. So I think he's, that, he's that, physically that, improving. <laughs> Uh, that's what the Asian connection was like. It was like a lot of, ju- it was slow and indecipherable. Um, the only like thing I remember from the Asian connection, which is from a similar late, late era, like this is the late era of the late era, is uh, he's talking to a group of guys and he goes, I've been coming here to Asia for 30 years. But that was, um, he stopped doing the AAVE. Like he just sounds like Decker. Now. Yeah, no, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, he's no. doing Decker voice now. Why? Well, yeah. I think it's because ever since Trump became in office, he he realized this is some serious shit. Okay, yeah, yeah. there's a government inside the government, <laughs> yeah. inside the government, like a government turducken. They're the shadow wolves, Matt. The, the, shadow, the shadow wolves, the and shadow we must wolves. battle these forces. What if? What, no, what is he? The- he's not doing. He's not doing AAV. He's not saying like. I'm gonna snatch every motherfucking birthday. <laughs> but, uh, but Felix, no black guy has ever said he loves saying things in the, like he doesn't do it anymore since Trump. He, Trump probably called him and was like, "To cut it out with that urban shit, Stephen." Because <laughs> they're the only movies that Trump watches. But yeah, he loves saying things that like just no black guy has ever said that no one ever said. Uh, in, in, in a part of the movie that I that I did watch, it's like okay, like he's like he he and his CIA team are trying to take down an organ trafficking network in in Cambodia that's run by a Maltese man. <laughs> Someone's been reading my timeline. <laughs> but uh, like, but like uh, the the op goes bad and they lose one of their agents and like the CIA the CIA handler who you saw in that first scene is just like you're done, like we're t- we're going in a different direction in Southeast Asia. And one of the members of his team is like, this is bullshit. I'm never leaving. Asia is my home. (laughs) 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 Asia, Asia, all of it is home to me. You know, the whole thing, the whole place from from Lebanon to Brunei. (laughs) That is a big tent. (laughs) I feel equally at home in Mongolia as I do Singapore, as I do Hyperbod. Those are all the same place to me. To me, they are all the same because I am <laughs> at home in Asia. Uh, whether it, whether it's Mecca or Guangzhou province, same thing. Yep. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> so there we go. I mean, just a, just a little bit of, um, you know, like I said, like with you, the, the, our, these latest episodes, we're trying to fucking teach people about stuff. We're trying to teach you about a little bit about the history, you know, because like 
yeah. Pre- we don't have much to say about the present, but like, you know, let's go to the past. And like, yeah. you know, like the, the, Steven Seagal is a fucking, you know, he's a wellspring of knowledge about the CIA. Because, you know, he's like, he's, He's been he's played CIA agents in movies. He's been in the CIA. He's been an Navy SEAL. He's the only he's, civilian allowed to defuse an atomic bomb. As yeah, he, has claimed. he did. He, he did it. He had uh, when he went. He went to Navy SEAL college and minored in being in the mafia. <laughs> spent the summer as a hitman in between no, I mean, being like, a SEAL and an Army Ranger. I'm saying like like a lot of our recent episodes are about this sort of nexus between uh, the intelligence community, organized crime, um, you know, like anti Castro exiles or whatever. And like Seagal sits at that very same nexus. Yeah. He understands how crime and intelligence and nation states. He's like, yeah, like anyone who says shit about America, it's not your home. It's not your home anymore. If you knew your home's Asia. Yeah, your home. If you knew, if you knew the unclassified information that Seagal does, you would not be calling America your home. You'd be calling Asia. You'd straight be calling to Asia. Asia. You would be straight, going straight to Asia, buddy. Uh, my fa- I, Seagal, he has so many awesome things. Like, yeah, only civilian, civilian authorized to be using nuclear bomb, but, uh, like lying about being a SEAL. But this early in his career, this was like before it was cool to be a Navy SEAL and shit. Like in the late eighties, it was before operator worship became a thing. And his thing then was he was like, yeah, I was actually in the mafia growing up. <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> I was, used to be a part of the mafia. I don't really talk to those guys anymore. But yeah, I was actually like, I was one of the best hitmen ever. Carlo Gambino uh, just like scouted me one day doing karate. It was like, hey, hey, kid, <laughs> hits. hey, kid, would you like a job? Yeah, he's the great. Like he is. That's what an American really is. It's Steven Seagal. Yep, just whatever he wants to be at any given time, and he is it to the degree that he can convince other people that he is. Yeah, ageless, but not in a good way. Yeah, uh, uh, he's. What if he he's the one that uncovers the deep state? Like, what if like just he has through, through his well, I mean, he through has his films and novel, but only to us. Laid like, it all out, only to us. Like we're like. He's like uh, uh, Sam Berkowitz's uh, do- or David Berkowitz's dog. <laughs> we're we're the ones hearing him bark. He can only, yeah, uh, we, we're the only ones. <laughs> but I mean, like to the world, like what if? So you know how they're always like they're pushing back the JFK documents every ten years, every ten years. What if he's the one that finally gets them, and then it's just like history remembers him. Like history barely makes Obama a footnote a hundred years yeah. from now. People are like, he's like McKinley. Like people are like, yeah. oh yeah, I guess he was president. But everyone talks about Seagal as the guy who blew the whole thing open. Yes. Just imagine him like fatly walking into the <laughs> National Archives and just being like, I'm going to need to see every motherfucking document you got. No, don't, that's don't, how it... Yeah. Don't tell me if it's classified. I've done things that you... that are so classified that they cancel out this classification. Don't <laughs> I'll tell you every motherfucking thing. That's how it's going to go. He's going to go into the National Archives or the NSA, like that, you know, that huge, like, data Kaaba they have in Utah for the NSA. Yeah. He's going to go there and he's going to say one of his uh, things that he thinks black guys say but don't say. He, he's going to go in there and be like, I need all the cupcakes with double frosting. You know what I mean? <laughs> or just, you know, just nonsense. I'm but, about to do a yeah. motherf- I'm about to do a motherfucking rain dance on your head. <laughs> yeah. Y'all motherfuckers get me a grape soda on the rocks. <laughs> like, what? But it's... <laughs> It's going to be like they're going to be like, oh, that's code. He wants all the JFK files. Like if he knows the code, he has like above top secret clearance. We have to give it to him. Yep. And boom. Next week, by the next week after that, Michael Hayden in prison, John Brennan in prison, Oliver North in prison. Uh, there's like a, a people's commune government. And it's all because of him. What if, I t- what if I told you 20 years ago that there's a government within the government? Operating as the real government. Don't tell me this is my home. Asia, I live in Asia now. Did you know there's a government in Asia? There's several governments in Asia. <laughs> what if I told you? What if I told you there was a motherfucking meal in between lunch and breakfast, and you could have a hamburger with some eggs? <laughs> Don't you fucking tell me what you tell you about what I can do. You, I've done things that you don't even know that I've done. And if you did them, you know you do them. But if I'm you so, did them, you'd be telling me that you did them to me. 
And if my, I did them to you, you'd forget who did them to you. My, my clearance is so high, I've had meals that I don't even know about. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what's in between dinner and dessert? Most motherfuckers don't. <laughs> <laughs> they do in Asia, though. <laughs> in Asia, they, in they, Asia have hun- they, have, they have hundreds of words for it. In Asia, my home. In well, Asia. I'm a man without a country, except for Asia. <laughs> in Asia. They've, embraced me. They've embraced me over here. In Asia, they eat eight small meals a day, and it's actually less calories. It's like Hanukkah. You have more days to look forward to and more presents. <laughs> y'all, y'all ever seen? Y'all ever seen Eight Crazy Nights? There's a se- there's a sequel that I did for the CIA. You don't even fucking know about. It's you think it'd be called Nine Crazy Nights? But no, you don't add a fucking day to Hanukkah. I like the idea that like, Crazy Nights too. His movies are getting like progressively even more straight to fucking DVD, straight to a <laughs> streaming channel that you can only access on like the tour network. And he's like, yeah. my, my movies have gotten so motherfucking classified. <laughs> yeah, yeah. His movies now just go directly into like a partially obscured memory in your mind. There's no distribution. <laughs> <laughs> they just, they, they, it just, it's like the big bang. They just happen. And then suddenly you like, you have a new, like partial memory of you have, you have a, you have a new down. image. You have a new image in your head of like how bad he looks. <laughs> yeah, it's a new thing every time. It's like, oh, there's like a weird glaze over his ear now. 